one of the main things we'll be talking about is nuclear decay or radioactivity. So what is radioactivity? Well, certain nucleuses are unstable. Certain nucleuses are unstable. That means they only last for a while and then they emit particles and change into something else. What is radioactivity? Radioactivity is when a nucleus is unstable and changes into something else and emits a particle at the same time. The reason why radioactivity can be dangerous is because the particles can be dangerous that are being emitted. So let's go through the various types of decay. There could be alpha decay. Now, in an alpha decay, you are decaying and emitting an alpha particle. So should the alpha particle be a starting material or a product? Because you're emitting it, so. Do you remember what are the numbers for the alpha particle? Um, A is 4 and Z is 2. Because it's just a helium nucleus. If you wanted to, you could write this as HE. It doesn't matter if you write it as HE or as alpha, because they're the same thing. And then, how can we figure out the atomic number? So, X here is what's called the parent nucleus. And Y is what's called the daughter nucleus. X is the parent and Y is the daughter. What can we say about the mass number for this daughter nucleus? How could we calculate it if we knew A and Z? If we knew A and Z, I think it would be the difference between alpha particle and the parent. So what's the exact calculation? A minus 4. A minus 4. And what's the exact calculation that we do to find this number? B minus 2. Okay. And you're pretty sure to have to do some problems like this on the exam. The key thing here is that notice all of the, the Z's on the left balance with the Z's on the right. And the A's on the left balance with the A's on the right. This is how you do problems. So generally they'll tell you all but one of the Z's or all but one of the A's. And then we can use balancing to see what the missing numbers are. For example, 2 plus Z minus 2 is Z. And that's the same as on the left hand side. Or 4 plus A minus 4 is A. So it's very important when you're looking at a type of nuclear transformation to ask what type of particle is involved and is it a starting material or a product? Those are the two big things to watch out for. Here an alpha decay has an alpha particle as a product. There's also beta decay. Where we emit a beta particle. So would the beta particle be a starting material or a product? What are the numbers for a beta particle? Um, zero, negative one. Good. So then what would be the numbers for this daughter nucleus here? <clears throat> um, a, because it would be a zero. And then Z plus one. Yeah, because Z plus one minus one is Z. By the way, the book here is reminding me there's also a neutrino that's emitted. But neutrinos, I don't think, are going to be too important in your course. Neutrinos have no mass and no charge. So for the problems you're going to see, we, we can ignore the neutrinos that are happening here and just focus on these particles. There could also be a positron emission. In that case, would the positron be a starting material or a product? A product? Good. What's the symbol for a positron? Um, it is beta. And its numbers would be? Zero and positive. And then we can figure out the characteristics of the daughter nucleus. It'd be A <clears throat> and Z minus one. Z minus one plus one is Z, and zero plus A is A. So the book considers both of these to be beta decays, because they're both emitting beta particles. This is a kind of, if, if they just say beta decay without saying what it is, they probably mean this, because a beta particle specifically is an electron.
you might consider a positron emission a, a, a relative of beta decay. And there's also something called electron capture. Now, from the name electron capture, is the electron a starting material or a product? A product. Now, let's think about that there. If the electron is being captured, it's shooting into the nucleus and not out. So it really has to be, the, the, when does the electron exist as a separate entity? Only in the starting materials. If the electron is being captured, it only exists as a separate entity in the starting materials. This is the first example that we've seen of a particle that would be a starting material. In these two other examples, the electron was being emitted, so it existed as a separate particle only in the products, not in the starting material. But if the electron is being captured, it exists as a separate material, a separate entity before it's captured as a starting material, and what would be the numbers on the beta? Uh, zero and negative one. And then what would you say about the daughter nucleus? Um, it would be A, mm -hmm. and then Z plus In order to balance, this has to be z minus 1, because the sum of the atomic numbers on the left is z minus 1. And again, I'm leaving out the neutrinos, because I don't think you guys are going to talk about neutrinos. z minus 1. Your book actually lists electron capture as a type of beta decay. Although, I don't know if everyone would agree with that. I usually think of a decay as something where you emit a particle. So I'm not sure if everyone would agree this is a beta decay. But the reason they're putting it in this category is it involves a beta particle. So whether or not it's a decay, it definitely involves a beta particle. If they just say beta decay, though, they're gonna, they mean this, emitting an electron. They would have to tell, give you more information if you if you're going to do one of these two. They'd have to specifically say positron emission or electron capture. But anyway, this is why I was saying that you have to always ask if the particle is a starting material or a product. It's usually a product when it's being emitted, but in electron capture, it's actually a starting material. That makes a big difference. And lastly, we have gamma decay, where we're emitting a gamma particle. So would the gamma particle be a starting material or a product? A product. What are the numbers for a gamma particle? So what would be the numbers for the daughter nucleus? A and Z. Good. Because Z plus zero is Z, and A plus zero is A. But in that case, are the daughter nucleus and the parent nucleus the same element or different elements? The same. So there's no point using an a Y here. We could call this X. Well, then, what's the whole point of gamma decay? It looks like nothing is changing at all. So what's actually happening in gamma decay? Well, the gamma particle is not carrying any mass, and it's not carrying any charge, but it is carrying energy. I think we talked last time about how the energy of each gamma photon would be E equals HF, right? The energy of each gamma photon would be given by E equals HF. So this is carrying away energy. So what's the difference between the parent nucleus and the daughter? This must have been a nucleus in an excited state. This is an excited nucleus where the protons and the neutrons are at higher than ground state energy levels. So this is an example where the nucleus is simply losing energy and falling to a lower energy level. We're actually not really going to study energy levels for nuclei very much. You're going to study energy levels for electrons. You're not really going to study energy levels for neutrons and protons, but they still exist. And what's happening here is the protons and neutrons are falling to lower energy levels. The symbol for an excited state is a star. So the best way to write this is with a star on the parent nucleus to show that the parent nucleus is in the excited state. And then when it loses the energy in the photon here, it goes down to a less excited state. So that's what's happening in the gamma decay. But it doesn't actually change the identity of the element.